Back in 2012, I decided to go ahead and invest into a 18 volt cordless tool set. And you can see everything that I own right now. This is the Porter cable set. And back then, I wasn't doing a whole lot on YouTube. I had a couple rental properties that I still own. And occasionally, I have to do some maintenance. And a lot of times, I didn't have electricity. So this is why I decided to go ahead and buy a tool set. Now, when I start out with one tool, I like to make sure I'm actually going to like the tool set. Because there's nothing like buying a tool. Then finding out you don't like it, then jumping to another brand. Only having that first tool laying around that you never will use. Now, when I first picked up these tools, I first thing I actually owned was this saw here, a light, and a drill just for basic operations. And after the first year, the first thing I started to run into with problems were the batteries, which we'll get into here a little bit later. But overall, the saw performed fairly well. The drill, no problem here. I did, had to drill a lot of holes in the walls with uh, uh, drill bits, and the light was no problem for about a year. Now, after about a year, I started having problems with the light, which is pretty typical and probably partially my fault. The first thing happened was the handle here started to come apart, mainly because I had a lot of chemicals on my hands, some cleaning supplies, but this did come apart. And after about five years, you can see how the lens here became scratched up. I got a lot of marks on it from welding, uh, sparks flying on it, but overall, the lights held up fairly well. The little bulbs that you get with it, the little those little halogen lights. Now after being annoyed just how cloudy the glass was and how this was coming apart, I decided to go on eBay and I actually found out that I can pick up another one in pretty good condition. Picked this up for $18 free shipping and you can see how nice and clean the glass is on this one and also the handle is in fairly good shape so someone's actually taken a little bit better care of this. Of course I am a very heavy user and this is why I'm actually doing this review. Now, as you can see here, the light is really still bright. Uh, the battery seems to hold up a little bit better, especially if you're using a light. But when you're starting to use the tools, we get into some problems here with the battery life. They just really don't hold up, especially the cheaper brand batteries that come with it when you first buy these tools. Now, here we have a reciprocating saw, or some of you like to call saw saw. This held up pretty nicely, but you can see the end of it here is scuffed up a little bit. Some of the rubber has come off, but like I said, this is pretty typical when you're working on old houses. And the battery, pretty good shape yet. Although on full charge, if you're running this for about 10 minutes, the battery does go down pretty quick. And now for releasing the key on this, it works fairly well. I've never had any of the blades pop out, especially like some of the higher dollar in uh, saws that you get. This one here actually keeps the blade in fairly well. As a matter of fact, I've actually bent a couple blades from uh, actually getting into a bind. So this key here really works fairly well. And you can see the uh, swivel here when you're cutting against the wall. It actually works pretty good. And as for this guy here, it has worked really well. Uh, you've got to be careful because with these little blades, you can actually bend them. But you can see you do have a little wheel right there for that blade to kind of ride on to keep it centered straight as you're uh, maybe cutting a countertop or even cutting some light heavy-duty metal. And on the side here, you have two speeds, reverse. I do believe that's what that is. Let's just find out real quick. I've kind of forgotten. But one thing I've noticed, I don't know what this actually does. You got one speed there, I guess. But the sound of the speed doesn't really change. And if I go up to off, it still works. It probably has something to do with the power of the cutting of the blade. But overall, I can't complain. This saw here has really saved me a lot of uh, places where I can get into in tight corners. All right, and now as for the mini impact drill, if you will, uh, it does have a little chuck here that you can pop off. And I've actually broken a couple of these. This thing here is a little more powerful than you think. And uh, it does stay in there fairly nicely. But you can see uh, how the boot here has just gotten completely torn up. And again, this is partially my fault with greasy hands working on a lot of automobiles. I use this quite a bit just for loosening bolts and so forth. And you can see on the bottom here, we do have a little place there where you can kind of put a key in. But the one thing about this is here, put the key in your pocket because I have lost lots of keys. They just don't really stay in there. It's easy to actually knock out your little Phillip head 
or your uh, any tool that you stick in there. So that's nice to have, but it doesn't stay, just so you know. And of course, with this, you got two speeds. You got reverse. You flip the switch here, and you flip it back around. That's like this, and you got forward, and it's, and it's variable speed. So no problem, and also you got a nice little light to kind of guide you into those dark holes at night. And also now you can see my drill, which is basically the same thing. Uh, it's actually held up a lot better, which is kind of interesting. So maybe uh, this one here didn't get quite the grease on it, but it looks actually like it's in worse shape on the top here. Just a lot of dirt, grease stains, but nothing is torn. And uh, let's put the battery in that one. And of course, this has got a reversible drill. Flip that like that. And on the top here, you can adjust the settings here so you don't maybe go too far into the wood. Or if you're going through steel, you can make it a little bit easier. And the top of this here, where the chuck goes in and the bit, it looks like it's held up fairly nicely, although I've got some dents on it here. Uh, but you can see it has got a workout for sure. This is why I'm doing this video, because a lot of people do video reviews after about a year on tools, and I don't think that's a really a very good review. I like to do them after four or five years to tell you how they hold up. Now this here is held up fairly well, and we also have a little light there, just like the other drill, so you can see in those tight corners at night. Before we move on to the batteries, to be fair, let's go ahead and put a battery into the saw here. And I want to show you what it sounds like. This is one of the tools that really drains batteries down fast because obviously it is a big motor there. And it will continue just to drain that battery down as you're working it nonstop, especially if you're cutting plywood. But it does have a reverse trigger here. And we go forward here, push on that, and you can see this battery is already getting low just for me playing around with this tool. So if you're going to use one of these, make sure you have a really sharp blade. It does help to extend the battery life, especially on this saw. All right, now for the batteries, well, unfortunately, not so good news. When you buy a Porter cable tool set, you really need to buy the lithium-ion batteries. These batteries that are 18-volt standard, they just do not last. I have been through 20 batteries since 2012. These batteries here are no good. The only two batteries I got right now is this one. And this one here on the charger. And the charger, I've not had any problems whatsoever. Now, I do believe you can buy a higher upgrade battery for this. And the NICAD battery, I think they do make a, a lithium ion that is 18 volts. But some of the newer tools that are coming out now, I believe, are 20 volts. But the charger here, I have not had any problems with. I've actually had really good results with for this it does charge up the batteries fairly well matter of fact here's one slow now and you've got these settings here you got low charging you got a problem here if it's blinking really 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 fast and you can see here if it blinks really fast and kind of like a morse code means the battery's too hot and if it's like going really nuts here this means that it's probably either shorted out the battery or it's got an internal problem so you can see we put that battery on there we got a slow blink and the battery is pretty good. And by the way, there is the rating of the battery right there. It is a 2,000 milliamp battery. And we'll stick the other battery on here. And you can see it's charging. So these are two good batteries that I do have. Now here is one of the original Porter cable batteries. You can see the original sticker there, and we got it on the charger, but after about three or four minutes, the light just goes crazy because this thing shorts out. Now the other batteries that I had been buying were aftermarket batteries. They seem to hold up fairly well, but there is one problem with these batteries. Let's tear open one of these batteries, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, just like I said, after about two minutes, there we go, we got an internal short. It says that this battery pack really has a problem. Now, here's a battery pack that we're going to tear open. I'm going to show you what happens inside these battery packs. And before we tear it open, you can hear this. Hear that? That's part of the problem with some of these batteries. They are not really made all that well and thought out on the inside. Let's tear this apart real quick as we watch this thing here do a slowly death blink. All right, so we got this battery apart, and they're held in by six of these uh, two-inch little screws here, security bits. So we got this apart. 
And here's what we have for a battery pack. Now I've attempted to fix this in the past. You can see right there, there's one of my welds that I tried to get back on. The problem with these batteries are these wires will come loose once the battery pack starts shaking around. You can see just how loose it is in here. Since this battery's no good, it doesn't really matter anymore. We'll pull this out. And you can see on the bottom here where it's gotten really hot, shorted out a couple of times, and even right there. So these batteries aren't really all that great, although the tools themselves, I really don't have any problem with. It's just the batteries, they just don't hold up. And here is proof, so yeah, this one here is pretty much toast. They do have a little packing around the bottom, but overall, uh, they're not really that great. Now, you can rebuild these, but by the time you rebuild them, you almost would have just as much into a new battery if you went out and bought a new lithium-ion battery for your pack by the time you rebuilt one of these. And if you rebuild one of these, well, you're still going to have just a regular NATCAD battery that's not going to really hold up all that much. And also, one other quick note here, you can see how they are kind of soldered up, if you will, in series. They're not really soldered. I don't even see any solder. They're just kind of heated up where the uh, metal just kind of uh, gets into a point where it's connected. And you can see I've even tried to attempt to fix that one a while back. You can see my uh, marks there with some solder, and the solder doesn't even really stick. But uh, as this stuff starts to move around, these wires come loose, they break. And next thing you know, you have just a big mess of batteries like this moving around in a pack. So if you have a Porter Cable battery, pick it up and shake it. When you shake it, you know you got a problem. A good battery, if you pick it up and shake it, you're not going to have that problem. So this one here is fairly well uh, maintained. It looks like it should be uh, okay for a while. But you can see we still are on that leaking sensation on that battery. So, yep. So I have two good batteries left here, so it looks like I'll end up buying some lithium-ion batteries from now on, and hopefully I'll have a little better results with that. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, in a nutshell, the tools are pretty good. It's just the batteries that have the problems, and when you buy batteries, just make sure you buy higher-end batteries, and I think you'll be pretty happy overall with these power tools from Porter Cable. My question is, do you own Porter Cable, and would you buy these tools? Let me know what you think is the best on the market for your money these days because we are going into the holidays and somebody might be actually buying some tools. So let me know what you think and I hope you enjoyed this review. And if you do, give it a thumbs up and a like. My next video, guys, I will see you all later.